Welcome to the Bentley Systems Training Course, where you'll learn how to design concrete shear walls in RAM concrete. To begin the design of our concrete shear walls in this course, we started by assigning bar pattern templates to all of the section cuts in the model, and then we performed the design. We do have options to assign some custom reinforcement to the model if you would like a little greater control or if you find that any of your shear walls need any boundary elements, which we did find through the course of our design. We're going to explore two different commands in this video. We're going to assign bar patterns and also manual reinforcement. And let's first discuss the difference between these two commands. Bar patterns, or reinforcement placed uniformly along a wall panel, can be assigned to override the optimized bar pattern selected from the bar pattern templates. In contrast, manual reinforcement is reinforcement that might vary along the length of a wall panel, and that can also be assigned to override the optimized bar pattern that was selected from the bar pattern templates. In contrast to bar patterns, manual reinforcement is assigned to wall panels in zones where the bar size and spacing and number of reinforcement layers for each zone can be different. In addition, each zone within a wall panel may be assigned as a boundary element where the vertical reinforcement zone will be designed as a boundary according to the provisions of the selected design code. For this exercise, we will be customizing the reinforcement that was optimized for wall design group number two and wall design group number four. As you may recall, the second floor shear walls were given a warning about boundary elements and we're going to assign some manual reinforcement to the second floor. We also want to show you how you can customize your reinforcement. So if your spacing and your bar size isn't the way you would prefer to detail it, you can assign bar patterns, which is what we'll do for our first floor shear walls. And we'll start with that command. So if I go up to my assign menu, I'm going to click assign, followed by bar patterns. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select a wall design group. Now I happen to know I'm going to be assigning this to wall design group number two. If you didn't know what wall design group number it was, you can click on this pick button and then click on the wall design group you want. I'm going to go ahead and say wall design group number two. And I'm going to apply custom reinforcement at this point. So for the horizontal bars, I'm going to go with, say, number fives at 12 inches on center. For the vertical bars, I'm going to select number 7s at 12 inches on center. And then if I clicked on the All button, it would assign it to both levels. Or if I click the Single button, I can click which level I want to assign it to, which is what we'll do for this exercise. I'm going to assign this wall pattern to the first floor shear walls. So I'm going to go ahead and click on the Single button. I'm going to click Yes. And then I'm going to select the first floor walls. I'm going to right click to return back to that dialog. And now I'm also going to assign this to the first floor shear walls for wall design group number four. Now, if I were to perform a redesign at this phase of the design, it's going to go ahead and check that custom reinforcement bar patterns for that first floor, and then it'll let me know if it's passing or failing. Before we redesign the shear walls, I'm also going to assign manual reinforcement to the second floor shear walls for wall design group number two and four. And this is in hopes to rectifying that error that I received about boundary elements. To do this, I'm going to use my manual reinforcement command. And the main difference is between this and assigning a bar pattern template is that you can vary your bar size patterns as you go along the length of the wall. And you can also define it as a boundary element. And this is the only command for you can address your boundary issues. To do this, I'm going to select my assign menu and I'm going to select manual reinforcement this time. After I select manual reinforcement, I'm going to select 
the area I want to adjust. I clicked on my second floor for wall design group number two, and then I can create my manual reinforcement. I need to add the zones for this particular wall, and each zone can have its own different type of reinforcement. And I'm going to have five different zones along this wall. I'm going to start with zone number one being at the left of the window. Then we'll do the field of the window. And then we'll do from this window to this window, and then so on for five zones. So I'm going to click the Add button five times. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust the starting and ending location for each zone. I want to go up to this window, so I'm going to say Zone 2. It's going to start at four feet. So it's going to be actually the left hand side. Zone number three is going to go up to 22 feet. Zone number four is going to start at 30 feet. And then zone number five is going to start at 48 feet. So I've located my zones where I want. I'm going to identify what my horizontal reinforcement is going to be. I'm going to select my number fives at 12 inches on center. And then I'm going to specify the bar size. I can specify whatever bar size and spacing I want for each zone independently of the other zones. I'm going to choose number seven bars for each area. And I'm going to space them each at six inches on center. I'm going to have two bars. And I'm also going to define every area as a boundary element. So we're going to go ahead and click yes for all of these. And just so you can see what the options are, you can pull it down to the whether or not you want it checked as a boundary element. Once we're done, we'll go ahead and click OK. And now that reinforcement has been assigned to that particular wall. You also might have noticed that as you adjust your reinforcement for every particular area, your section cuts will turn yellow, indicating that their design is not current. So at the end of this, we will have to adjust or redesign the entire model to get capture those results. I'm going to repeat this process for the second floor and wall design group number four. The final step in our workflow is to redesign the shear walls using the manual bar patterns and manual reinforcement that was assigned earlier in this video. To do that, we're going to return to our process menu and then click Design All. Now the designs of wall group number one and three will be pretty quick because their designs are already current. So RAM Structural System will be spending its time during the analysis, focusing on wall design group number two and wall design group number four to re-verify the manual reinforcement that was assigned to those walls. After the design is complete, we'll click on the Close button. After the redesign is complete, we're also again going to return to our View Update command to review the results of each of the new walls we just designed 
and also to double check their warnings and their boundary element design. To do this, we're going to go back to our process menu and click View Update, and we'll work on wall design group number two. I can see that I still have a symbol over here next to design warnings. And if I select one of those section cuts at the second floor level, I can see that some areas require lateral ties to confine the vertical reinforcement. It will also indicate the maximum spacing of vertical ties per the code requirement. And this is a reminder to go ahead and make sure you detail your walls accordingly. In addition to that, I can select my boundary elements tab. And since this was defined as a boundary element, Ram Concrete has reported the re tie requirements for each zone that was defined as a boundary element. Once you're done reviewing this information, and of course making sure this information makes it onto your construction drawings, you can close out of this dialog and then also remember to review wall design group number four for that same type of information. This completes the full workflow that would be required to design lateral concrete shear walls in RAM Concrete. You can now return to the RAM Manager and then move on with your overall workflow. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you and see you next time.